No one has done what he did in 1976. He became the only athlete to win both the 400 and 800 meters race in an Olympic game. He's one of the brightest and committed sportsmen in Cuba, a country with a long tradition on track and field. This Cuban icon, born in Santiago de Cuba, is a member of the International Association of Athletics Federation. We visited him at the headquarters of the Cuban Federation of Athletism in Havana, where he told us what is to be a gold medal winner and such a respected man in Cuba. Thank you so much, Juan Torena, for giving us the opportunity to talk to you here in Telesur. Thank you very much to give me the opportunity to, to talk to you and to the viewer of, the, of Telesur. It's, uh, it's actually hard to interview you because you've been interviewed so many times that it's actually hard to find a different approach to a dialogue with Juan Alberto Juan Torena. But for the youngest uh, members of our audience, I want a little, at least briefly, the story of how a young boy that was supposed, supposed to be a basketball player became a runner and an athlete. Did you know that you wanted to do that? Or someone talked you into that? Now let me say something very special that I, sometimes I do not talk too much about this, but my first sport was track and field. My first medals in my sport career was in track and field. Running in my municipality in Santiago de Cuba, winning 600 meter races, to 1200 meter races. At that time was the, the distance that the young people used to run at that time. And then I have the ability to run and to beat those athletes in the, my municipality who was training at a daily basis. The people was in, in the school for, for initiation school in Santiago de Cuba, and then I beat them all. I beat everyone, everybody. And then I, I know deeply in my heart I have the possibility to be a runner, but suddenly I grew up, and then I was selected and put in the thing in basketball in my secondary school in Rafael Maria Mendive in the 70s. That's the story. But that was in my, my first medal was in track and field. Then I moved to basketball, and then I returned. To, to track and field. You, I remember um, many times you've said that there's a Polish coach that actually make a, an impact on you and talk to, uh, talk to you into a different field. How yeah. important was this person in your life? This man uh, caused a big impact in my life because he was not only a coach, he was, also, he was like my father to me. I remember that my, my real father, my biological father came to Havana and talked to my coach and explained him, now he's in your hands. I will ask you to educate him to prepare for the life, and you are all entitled. Even knock him if he is not obey your orders. And once I, I was given a slam, slash in the face from my coach because he said, "Well, Father, give me all the rights to educate you." And this this coach was working here as international coaches, like in, in every sport in that time of the revolution come to from Hungary, from Soviet Union, from DDR, German Democratic Republic, from Korea, North Korea, and from Polish. There was many, many of, of the Polish was working here. And then I was giving him from a, 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 a coach for track and field named uh, Eneas Muñoz. They give me the opportunity to, to, to be involved in track and field. In nine months, I was in the, in the Olympic Games in Munich, 1972. Enea Muñoz and Jose Salazar. I cannot. I, 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 I need to mention two, two, two guys, two, those guys, those coaches, because when I was expelled from, track, from, from basketball, expelled, because they said I have no chance in basketball. You're bad. And they, You're bad at that. they said I was the world's basketball player <laughs> in the world. This is a feel about this. You, know, you, you, have, you have to watch it, you know. But I have the opportunity to return to my, to my origins, you know, because I was. One of the best, no, I was the best runners in Santiago de Cuba municipality in the games, in, in, in the school games, and, na and in the neighbor games. You know, I was the winner always. Always I was the winner. That's the story. Then I was a spell for, for basketball and then I returned to track and field. You um, have mentioned in previous interviews how the Cuban 
uh, Cuban athletism became uh, a very authentic way of educating sport women and men. Uh, although you've mentioned the influence of Soviet coaches and people that came from Europe to teach us a little bit about mythology and how to teach sports. Nevertheless, you've defended the idea that we have a Cuban school. How, how, how is it possible to create an authentic perspective, although we were so influenced by the Soviet? Because the Cuban coaches do not admit only to be assistants. They learn. And in this case, I need to recognize, back in the years, thinking about this many times, that the, the pupil was better than the, than the teachers this time. Because the Polish coach, they do not find in, in Poland one single man that can win in the Olympic game 400 and 800. And I did it, you know, in 1976 in Montreal uh, Olympic game. It was very rare because one, one event is the last event of the of sprinter, and the, the other one was the first sprint uh, event or middle distance. And then this coach was smart enough to know that they have a, a, a resistance, natural resistance. And then they add so many, many, many way of training, like you say, methodologies, weights, and you find the way that I can run at the same time 400 and 800 in the Olympic Games. But you knew that you were going to run both careers? You didn't no, know that? No, he was convincing me for months. I, I, I refused. For the first time, I refused to be on the track because I was afraid because the first event was 800, and my, my, my real event was 400. I, won, I was one, one of the best athletes at that era, in that time, in, the, in 400 in the world. And then, if I go to the Olympic game to run 800, maybe I got tired at that time, and then I cannot win 800, I cannot win 400. But he, he proved it. How he proved it? He asked me to run once in Formia in May 1976, to, to like a rabbit. I was the, the, the first rabbit, voluntary rabbit. I was running six, only 600 meters just to make two of my colleagues to make the minimum Olympic minimum to go to the Olympic game, 146.5 was the minimum Olympic game to go to Montreal 1976 Olympic game. And then I ran the, the 600 in 117, and then I continued to run. And for the first time in my life, I ran 1.5, And then I recognized myself. And then I, they gave me the confidence that I can run, like I can, I can do it in the Olympic game, and then I accept. Only in that particular case, I accept to run 400 and 800 in the Olympic game in 1976. Because they give me the confidence that if, if I run for the first time 144, 145.3, in the future, I have a brilliant future in, in front of me. And then I accept to run in that Olympic game for both events, 4 and 8. Do you think there's someone else that could do that? was two Jamaicans, Winfield and McKinley. They tried to do it in the same Olympic game, but they never, they never did it. Where it was won, where gold medal and bronze medal, gold medal and silver medal, but never won the two titles. But listen, I ran for the first time in my life 800 in 1.43.5. It was a record, Olympic record and world, 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 world record at that time. And then the ne next day, remember I ran, the first, the first day, 800. Who hits semi-final, final, world Olympic and, and world record. And then the next day, the first event of 400. Next day, the second, the second event. The next day, the semi-finalists. And then the final. When I was in the final, what the American believe? I, they saw the horse must be tired. They called me the horse at that time. He's not a superman. He, was, he had been running seven times. This is going to be his seventh race. And then that's why Fred Newhouse tried to run the first 200 very fast to burn my energy and to broke, and to broke down all my, all, all my ability in the last 100 meters, in the, in the last 100. But I do not eat the hook, you know. I only follow the advice of my coach, quiet, don't go with him, don't let him to go so far from you that, that, that you, if, if don't, you cannot catch him in the last 20 meters. And then I beat Fred Newhouse in the last, in the last 10 meters of the... 400 meter race. After he had been running six times, three times 800 and three times 400. And in that particular time was my seventh race in only one week. In five days, in five days. Because I, I, sometimes I really run two times in, in the day in the 400 meters. It's very, very, very difficult to do it at that time. 
besides your physical conditions, which obviously gave you an advantage, what else would you say gave you the opportunity or the chance to do such a big heroism for sports? One thing was very clear for me. I was very well prepared physically and mentally. I was so strong physically, I was so strong mentally that in that particular race, I was really in good shape in the both aspects of the, of the human being and the athlete, the physically and the mentally. And then I have the stamina, the courage. I was very brave at the time to compete. And one thing very important, I followed the advice of my coach 100%. My coach told me, run the first 400 faster than before. That's why after the Olympic game in Montreal, 800 become a little bit more, more speed race. Because my, my first lap was 5.50.8, and the 800 meter running, which is the, 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 the particular familiar of uh, 400 and the 1500, they ran 52. And then I passed my fir the first lap in 50.8, time to burn the energy of the, of the, of the middle distance runners, like Wolhurel, Van Damme, Wolhurel, Van Damme, Carlos Gripo, all of the other runners in that particular race. Um, you, um, it's known by our audience that Cuba has a long tradition and history in athletism. There's the pictures of many athletes that we have to feel proud, uh, Paralympics and others that have made the history of Cuba great. Nevertheless, in the last 20 years, we are not what we used to be in your times and the decade after your time. Um, What's your feeling about it? Why do you think is that? Is the change, the, the world changed, we changed? What are the factors that the have been factor combined? The factor is very simple. We move. We, Cuba is well known in the, in the 60s by the uh, printer runner, like uh, Figueroa, Pablo Montes, Mes Ramirez, Juan Morales. Even they won a silver medal in 1968 Mexico City, four by one. But now it's just a mutation. It's, it's very normal because the Cuba had the ability to jump. And now we have Soto Mayor, world record holder, still world record holder, 245. We have uh, Juan Miguel Echavarria nowadays, uh, Michael Maso. We have plenty of the jumpers now, triple jumpers that have been, have been in, the, in, the, in the history of the Cuban track and field, very, very awarded in Olympic Games, in World Championship. But that's why they move from, from the sprinter to to jumpers, now we have, and disco throwers too. It's, it's a basic, very, very sympathetic uh, uh, opinion, a very, very intelligent question, because now we move from a sprinter to jumper and throwers. Now we have Denia Caballero, World, uh, Maria Caridad Colón, Denia Caballero, Jaime Perez, we have many, many of them that's in the top of the, of the world nowadays in athletics. Um, nevertheless, the, the results are not as they used to be. Uh, essentially after the special period, the mm, time in which Cuba suffered the fallen of the Soviet Union. Um, what are you doing now as Cuban Federation of Athletes? We are working very hard now with, uh, with the new Oscomer Atli, the future the racing star. We're working very hard in the initiation school in a municipality, looking for talent, you know. You have every ingredient is on place, on the table. We need to play our role, we need to play our or for, ten, for methodologic, met, methodological point of view, we need to, to, to correct many, many things. But they have everything in hands to risk with, to, to be as good as we, as we was before in my era. Maria Carida Colón, Hermes Ramirez, Pablo Monte, many, many of, a, of a Cubans in, in the past. And now we are now working very hard, but looking for the talent. Talent. Don't, where do we need to go the talent? We need to go to the mountain, we need to go to the municipality, we need to do, go to the neighborhood, we need to go to many, to plan, many, many places to look for the talent because we have the talent, we have the coaches, we have the, we have coaches who are smart, they have been proven in many, many times, but that we have very, very uh, specific coaches who are really smart enough to put the Cuba in the top of athletics. Now, Cuba is a small, a small country because everybody is in the belief that we need to have jumper, thrower, uh, sprinter, middle distance, and no one, no country in the world have entirely 
developing the athletics. It's very difficult. If you look at the Jamaica, it's only sprinter. If you go to, to Kenya, they have on now Diego in javelin. He's an Olympic champion. Only one. They don't have thrower. They don't have uh, jumpers, like a triple jump, like a long jump or whatever, you know. But they are really good in, in, in middle and long distance. They won all the titles from 800 to marathon. But nowadays, you need to fight with this ability or genetic, the genetic impact of the human being. Because it, it's very difficult to have nowadays in, in one country all the areas of athletic. Athletic is a very complex, very complicated sport. Have 40, 40, 47 disciplines. It's impossible for one country like Russia, like Hungary, like uh, the Polish. No one have all the athletics as a whole development as they have a, a world record holder or, or, your, or winner in the Olympic game or, or whatever in, in, in world championship. It's impossible. That is a, that the, the, the people are really sometimes, that they do not take into account that we need to take care of the genetic of the people, the tradition of the people. If you go to Ethiopia, Ethiopia is a runners. Long and short distances sometimes, but in middle and long distance runner. Have you, have you heard a, a, a hammer thrower from Ethiopia in the podium? Never. You have a javelin for Ethiopia? Never. But you go to half marathon or marathon, 1,500 or 10,000 meters or 5,000 meters, you, I can mention 20, 20 of them that get in the top of the ranking. But no one in the world has developed the athletic as a whole. Integrally, it's impossible. You, you had a very... Um, interesting relation, and you've mentioned many times with uh, Cuban leader Fidel Castro. Uh, many times you've said that uh, that one of the that big uh, runs that you gave and you won, and you dedicated to Fidel Castro. It was very common in Cuba too that athletes dedicated their results, good results, to him. He is not longer physically with Cubans. He passed away. What would be the main motivation and commitment uh, for the young uh, athletes in track and field sports and women? And the legacy of Fidel Castro in the sport is in place. He invented this. It's like a windmill all the time, moving, moving all the time. Because Fidel created that the mass, in the mass, the genius is among the mass. If you work with thousands of athletes, if you go in physical education, one thousand of, with thousands of coaches, students, you can find the best. You can select. You, 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 are, you are selecting the best. That's the legacy of Fidel. Fidel invented this, this one. The mass sport is like a pyramid, the base of the pyramid, you know. The peak is the elite. Elite, that's, is, to be an Olympic champion, to be a world champion, to be a world record holder, is only for a few people. But to find that, that people, you need to work in the base. You need to go in the municipality. You need to go in the mountain. You need to go in the countryside. You need to go to the school, every country. We have all the resources. We have more than 95,000 physical education teachers graduated in two, in two branches, in the, in the university and the, in technically. We have many, many, many coaches. One coach find a talent is 95,000 talents. And then you can find, you can select the best. That's why we said that the best coaches that we ever have and the sport have is Fidel. Fidel Castro is the best coach, the best trainer. He was a basketball player. He was a, he was a, a, a baseball player. He was a, a football player. He was a shooter. He was a swimmer. And once when I returned from the Olympic game, he showed me a picture winning in 1946, Fidel was winning the 800 meter race in, 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 in the school for religions school in, in Cuba. And Fidel was like me, a long stride. And he was, he dedicated a picture for Juan Torena. At the time, he was not still born, but, he, but, but I dedicated the, the, the picture to him. This means that he was away, away, alive. I was the second, he was the first. It's some joke. He made, at the time to dedicate, he made a joke to me. But Fidel was a fantastic athlete. Um, uh, uh, rather than that, Fidel invented one thing. You never be nothing by your own. You must to recognize 
to be a champion and to be a good citizen, you must to receive the influence and the impact and the support and the help of many people. An athlete, so you don't have a coach, you don't have a doctor, you don't have a psychologist, you don't have nutritional people, you don't have the people who put the equipment on the track, the people who cook, the people who clean the room. It is the it is integral, integral job. That's why Fidel always say, you must to dedicate your triumph, not to yourself, for the dignity of the country, for the dignity of your flag, for the dignity of the young generation, to inspire the, the, the generation. I have a, in my office, I have a, a picture of Fidel sitting on the ground in, in Pedro Marrero, and he said, after Juan Torrena, a Silvio Lorena, we must fight a better athlete than him, than them. It's, it's a Fidel calling that we need to me to use the image of the athlete to inspire the young generation, to motivate them, to put them in, them in the right track for, as, as, but to be a good citizen because the sport only teaches you good things. Health, and inspire them, the, your generation, inspire you, inspire your father, inspire your family, inspire, inspire many, many things around the sport. Do you still run? No, I do not. I cannot run because I have many, many physical problems because of the sport, but I walk. You walk? I walk. I walk uh, three times. Do you miss it? Three times. Do you uh, miss running? I, I miss running, but I cannot run anymore. <laughs> for, for instance, I was in the half marathon in Baradero to, in, on the 15th of April. The last 15th uh, was a, a Sunday. And then I, I do not run. I do, I do not run. I walk. I walk three kilometers with Sotomayor, Ana Fidelia, Maria Carrera Colón, with, uh, with Aguilera, with Lamela. Many, many of the, of the champion was in contact with the people, and the people was very happy to have uh, all the stars there. If you count the medal there, you have, I have two gold medals, Maria Carrera have one, Gixi Moreno have one, Ana Fidelia have, uh, she, was, she was not Olympic champion, but, but he has all the recognition of the, of, of the world. He was two-time Olympic the world champion. You can read it in one of the pictures of my Ana Fidelia from here. He was two-time Olympic champion. Or Lady Menende was not there, but she was from Matanza. And it means that the, we need to be in touch with the people. We need to be in touch with the population. We are, no, we are not a part of our society. We are not like God. No, no. We are simple people, ordinary people, people who believe that without the triumph of the revolution, without the impact of Fidel in the sport, no, no, no one of those can be Olympic champion or, or world champion. Impossible. Because we don't have the resources, because we have a human people, we have a, a more family or a tradition, we have not the money to invest in the sport. That's why I am very, we are very grateful to the sport in Cuba, because the, the sport in Cuba is a consequence of the, of the revolution. A consequence of the revolution. A good policy in the field of the sport, who put all the Cubans with equal right to practice sport, to be selected, to represent Cuba, but with dignity, with proud. That's my, my personal opinion in this, in this regard. Uh, you are a very passionate man. You can tell that by your accomplishments and, and the way you speak. What are you obsessed about now? What is your main motivation, that thing that wakes you up every day in the morning? If you are talking to me about the, the sport, I will say that we need to move. We need to work very hard. We need to, to work with passion, with dedication, with with commitment, with dedication, with passion. I, I would like to, to underline those words. I, I talk many times with young athletes in initiation in school or, or in the school, or in the sport, with young generation outside my country. I only explain, if you want to be the best, you never be, give up. You never, you never be tired. You need to have the ability to, 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 to enjoy the sacrifice the punishment that means that you need to run every day 10 kilometers, 15 kilometers, three tons of our weight, or, or climbing on the mountain, or running on the beach, you must to start to, to love the sacrifice. To be aware of that is the only way to, to succeed in the sport. That's always I said. Two, two months ago, I had a meeting with many Mexicans athletes in Mexico City, and I explained to John, John Atty, who was to a National Olympiada in for young people in, in Mexico. If you want to be the best, you must to run every day. You must to be disciplined inside and outside the track. You must to have determination, commitment, passion, 
And more than that, you need to learn how to suffer, to love the suffer, to enjoy the suffer. If you suffer today, you sacrifice today, then you can win tomorrow. If you don't do it during the training, it's impossible to do it during the competition. That's in, it's in, in, it's like one axioma. It's, it's the only way to win. It's the only way to win. Thank you so much. Always a pleasure talking to you. Thank you very much. Thank you.